Uh, Rank where June lands. 30 days, half September, April, June, and November. Mm -hmm. So that's how you know it's the last day. Uh, I think I like June. Um, it's all right. It's a nice summer month. Yeah, I think I think that moves kind of kind of high up the list a little bit. <laughs> Excuse me. You don't like it more than I'm not doing the month game with you. Okay. I'm uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Tuesday, Tuesday had a had a little nightcap last night. Um, living alone, just me and Noodle right now. Wow. So guy's house. Um. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey. Rye whiskey, I cry. If I don't get rye whiskey, I think I may die. Mm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm doing all right, man. I I'm I think I'm getting semi official plans to go back home for Fourth of July ish. Uh, so that's exciting. And uh, yeah, uh, an an okay weekend. We planned on having a a big Saturday. We were like, all right. We're going to crush Saturday. We're going to go, you know, big, active morning, mm -hmm. you know, tear up Central Park. And then, you know, maybe a little nap. There's debate if we should schedule the nap. And then we're like, we'll go out to dinner. Because that can happen in the city streets now. Eat outside. Mm -hmm. uh, and Friday into Saturday, my sweet Jessica slept in her contacts. And she... Like, basically, her eyes were ruined. She couldn't see light all day. Like, light irritated her eyes very badly. And so, we stayed inside all day, and we didn't do anything. That's a bummer. A little bit. It, they really messed up her eyes? That yeah, She's yeah. She's sensitive to contact? Um, I mean, not normally. Like, she sleeps in her contact sometimes, you know, as I think a lot of contact wearers yeah, do. Yeah, but there happens. are some times when it, yeah. Crazy. It, there's a name for it. I forget what it was. We were Googling it. But, um... So yeah, I heard it. Very very sensitive to light. So Saturday went from like <laughs> we're killing the day to the day has killed us. Um, watched something on Netflix, the the Great Flower Race or something, the Great Flower Game. Um, basically, it's a bunch of florists doing stuff. Oh yeah, they, I saw previews for that, the big flower fight. I enjoyed it. Uh, I didn't think I'd again. I think it's an expectation thing. I think if I had been building up the Great Flower Fight for months. Probably wouldn't have liked it. You sat alone and watched that alone, or you watched that with no, Jess? Jessica and I. Oh, okay, okay. Um. So that was kind of Saturday, and then Sunday we did end up, you know, a little park, a little dinner, and uh, here we are. So that was that was the freaking weekend. Freaking great weekend. Flower fight. About to have you some fun. Who won the great flower fight? Uh, I don't want to spoil it. I feel like not all of our followers have. Wow. Well, we'll discuss it next week after the 4th of July when everyone Damn. spends their time watching the Great Flower Fight. Just make it to South Carolina, okay? I'll say this. Yeah. The group, uh, there's three teams that make the final. Yeah. And it's kind of the three teams you want for different reasons. And that's all I'll say. I think it's called the Great Flower game or is it fight i think it's fight i think fights in there i'm gonna google image it this is my fight song, song. take back my life song oh yeah i mean this guy crushes it there's some good characters it just he's the best florist i can tell by talent on him the big flower fight Florists aren't so sh the most social people in my experience. Well, and you know what it is? I don't think they're all florists. Like, they all have slightly different skill set. Like, some are florists. Some are just, like, arrain uh, designers or stuff. I don't know. Like, they, they all have different specialties, which I think is fun. It's like, yeah. it's like, you know, if you were jumping into football and it's like, well, that guy's a power player. That guy's speed. And, like, they all had their special skills. And it was like, oh... They get to make the seahorse this round. They're going to kill it. And I don't know. They got me. I think it's seven or eight episodes. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk back my line about Floris not being social. Very creative. Because. Creative. In the wedding industry. Yes. The Floris just come and go. They right. don't hang out at the venue. So I guess they don't need to be social. Whereas, right. you know, I'm hanging out with the photographer, sure. the maitre d', the caterers, or whatever. And I mean, maybe... We're, the, we're all the DJ. We know we're in it together, so we're, sure. like, chatting all day. Let's make this, The yeah. floors come and go, which yeah. I'm thinking I wouldn't blame them for that. They don't have to stay yeah. around. And I mean, maybe it's, you know, when you're doing video editing type stuff, you know, that's probably... That wasn't where you got your artistic jollies. It's probably the same for a florist. Like, they're probably, you know... 
the the bride and groom told them everything they want. Yeah. Make this happen, flower person, instead of I think there is a creative and fun side to it, which the show displays. So it seems like this dude I don't know his name, but I'm putting on a screen. Seems like he's gonna win because Let's see. Wow, it's getting Can terrible. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if BBD has it too. Um This dude. I mean he's like the marquee guy on all there. He's the host. That makes a lot of sense. He's the host. Okay. So that um, makes a lot of sense. And he's actually pretty good too. He um, looks like he's great. He's pretty good. Um but yeah, I mean there's you got a couple guys that are just like over the top characters, like ridiculous. Um And then yeah, like there's uh, you know, one of the more fun teams is like a father son. And at first I had like a little bit of that like you know, the the constant circus discussion slash we led into something else with it the other day but like okay you're you're born into a life of flowers like mm. is that what you're into but they were having a blast uh father father son bonding on on fleek and so it was it was a good time how was uh how was the jersey shore hot i got burnt mm. i got burnt but it was awesome i mean it was like the first time my family's been together since christmas mm. all four of my of us O'Brien children and then significant others and then nephews now. So this is the first time since Christmas. So it's nice. They're all still there. Mm. Katie and I came back for three days and then we're going back on Wednesday night. So it's kind of like uh, we're missing out right now. Mm. Are there any young gals in the O'Brien clan? I, you said nephews, and I know amongst your siblings, but I'm I'm thinking even to Reef and Koa. Are we are we strong? No, so so strong males right after now. Ritzy, my younger sister. Yes, there's n- it's there's not a lot of females. Yeah, because after her came Tyler, Jake, Luke, and then there there's some on the, our my Michigan relative. Cousins. Okay, they have some little girls. Yeah, the rumor, the the thought process was that after my grandpa passed, it was all boys besides Ritzy. Okay, he was just giving us sons. I think that was like the, the joke or whatever. I was, I almost did a Jakey interrupt to make a silly joke, and I was going to say something about you know sex on top, because I think there's rumors about that making a boy or something. But then you mentioned your grandpa's passing, and it didn't yeah. seem as timely. I don't know if that's. Is that a rumor? Is that an I old think there is like a tale? fake rumor on it. Yeah, that was just some creepy dude oh, who wanted to sure. spread a sex position he enjoyed yeah. more. Yeah. Yes. Because that makes no sense for sure. To think that that would change the gender is unreal. Should we? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> should we? Uh, should we talk about the car dealership times? <laughs> yeah, Jake and I spent four hours at the Honda dealership. In Bronx, the Bronx Honda. Honda Willie yeah. Whips. Uh, Ask for Willie Whips. Yeah, I needed... <laughs> it, was, it was a mess, man. It was a good time. Our, my doorknob on my apartment was broken, so Katie can leave the apartment. Right. Because she was going to meet me here, and we were going to go get the new car together. But then I needed... Oh, I forgot about that whole aspect, yeah. And the parking garage here, like if I went by myself and came back, then the car, car here would have been locked up for the night. Right. So I needed to get it you out of there. Car. So I asked Jake to just come with me and pick up my new car. And we were at the four hours, I think. <laughs> it, was a d- it was a day. I think probably all in all, like travel. I think we were at the dealership locked in for three, three and a half. I think we left here at four and we got to the apartment at eight. The whole thing was just a comedy show. It was half not their fault, half their fault. Yeah, I, uh, that does deserve to be said. I mean, the they were trying their best. It wasn't like it wasn't like every time they came back, they were like, "Wait, so who are you guys?" Like, yeah. no, like they were working and they yeah, were yeah. grinding. But um, no, just like even the drive over there, it like we were just diving through the Bronx. Yeah. There was like no major roads. Yeah. So I mean, we got a full tour, and then we were chilling, and like the car. Congrats on the car from all the JJR followers and myself. It's nice. I can't believe how affordable it is. Yeah, kind of one of those weird adult things like, oh, we can just do this. Um, And then, uh, yeah, we kind of rolled up and they were going crazy. Uh, Willie Whips, shout out. He's rebranding himself. He wanted us to share that with you guys. Do you think we can find him? Didn't he say he made his Instagram Willie Whips? I'm just wondering... uh, so baseball stuff came up and we were friendly with them and they, you know, they asked about the company and stuff and dropped like, you know, some of the Yankees Astro stuff. Willie Whips is a Mets fan. 
Um, he's he thinks they're going to be good this year. So that's a uh, that's a little inside for the JJR crew. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always I always think it's funny because we, you know, we don't flex. Like I don't know, it would be really bizarre if we walked in and were like, yeah, you know, sports media company five fifty k on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Like you know, we just don't do that. So you know, I wonder if Willie Whips, who said he was going to check us out. If he checks out the YouTube and he's like, what the fuck? Yeah. I was buying a car, so he knows that, like, we make money. Yeah. I guess. I found him on LinkedIn. Okay. Did he go by Willie Whips? No, such a boss picture. That is a great pick. I don't know if Am I'm I like, showing this. No, don't show it. Yeah. I, I didn't put it on the I didn't put <laughs> Good it on job, the, BBD. <laughs> I didn't put it on the tab that you had. I would have been showing. <laughs> but um I have that tab. Oh, you have this one too? Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Willie Whips, he was like, yeah, yeah, hey, my name's Wilson, can you give me a good review and all that? And then yeah. he walked in the door, and then he stopped and turned, he's like, actually, I'm kind of rebranding myself as Willie Whips. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, all right, dude. <laughs> yeah. Hell yes. Yeah. It's better. better. Branding. Branding, man. Hey. Dude, he was busting his ass. He was like, he hey, was... when you get that review, can you give me, like, five stars? And I did, because he was busting he was his ass. sprinting around a lot. Everything you'd want. It was just funny. Like, there's just a lot of paperwork delays. And um, Jake and I. We had a good time. Four hours. Talked. Bronx Honda. Life, yeah. liberty, and the pursuit. So. Yeah, it turned into a business meeting and all that. That was nice. Dude, this is this is what's bothering me. This guy DM'd me. On sure. John, on my Instagram, which I hate. I, I kind of just ignore all the sure. DMs on my personal Instagram. And he's like. Got to tell you, I think 60-game season's a farce. Mm. You know, baseball, you know, even before 100, it takes 100 games before they even get going. And I said, so you'd rather know baseball? And he said, sad to say, but yeah. Baseball's been my whole life since I walked from the, since I walked away from the Phillies. Yeah. Okay. Plus, it's just like, no, you don't, dude. Like, why are you? Yeah. Why are you? Cuh. Quit bringing yeah. me your negativity. People try to do that all the time. It's like, why are you bringing your negativity yeah. to someone else in a personal DM? Like, I understand if you just reply on Twitter, that's fine. You can yeah. do whatever you want. But don't DM me just negativity. Like, come on. Yeah. No one wants that. Not into that. People um, do that all the time. Yeah, I forget I forget who I was listening to talk. I think it was Rosillo. I think I was listening to him. Um, and he had Dan Heron on. And then. Some good baseball talks, and they were talking about the season and stuff, and Dan Heron with some good old pitching stories. But um, I don't know. Rosillo's main point, and this is kind of why I like him, like he, he just finds a way to bring logic from a different angle. And he's like, you know, it's it's a baseball game. Like if you <laughs> – nobody's – if you like watching 162 of them, you're going to like watching 60 of them. <laughs> like it's just <laughs> – that's just how it works. Um so I I don't know, man. It's uh, I, it's still again. I'm not fully wrapping my head around baseball until after Fourth of July. Um, We're close to that, and uh, we are close. But I I think I'm gonna you know enjoy the weekend, and then I'm you know gonna look into the how what the Rays lineup looks like versus right-handed pitching, and then what it looks like versus left-handed pitching, and whether I want to see Jay Happ out there Whip. in Tampa. Do I want him at the stadium? Whip. Um. So yeah, get getting exciting. Okay. Uh, did we have anything else we want to talk about before we go into like? There's so much going on. I mean, did Jess get down south? Okay, she's down there. She flew. Um, she having a blast. I think show show. Uh, she she got there yesterday, and yeah, she's just chilling. She's got big, another crazy like job interview week, which is always like exciting and also hell. Uh. Um. That's yeah, cool. so I have a question for you, please. Since we're in the office now, we have the ability to in post the these on Periscope. Sure, which we are. We're on there, yes, sir. Only eleven people are watching live, so shout out to those eleven watching right now on the scope. But in my mind, right, it almost does a detriment to do that and have other people see that there's only eleven. You know, right? Where you know we get we the crowd that's been coming over from morning's been good. There's like 80, the crowd 90 the, on YouTube right now, and yeah. and we know that the listeners that actually tune in on the podcast app yeah. is well worth it. So it's almost like, is that a bad luck? Because mm-hmm. when I when I look at lives and I'm like, there's five people watching this. Why are they doing this? Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I I think you know bringing everything full circle this morning it ties into Willie Whips. 
Like, if we, you know, uh, sure, you can laugh that he's rebranding to Willie Whips, but, you know, if the Willie Whips grand, brand name grows, and then 10 years he's got a dealership and Willie Whips is, like, the known guy in the Bronx, that's it. So I think, you know, yeah, we've got a bunch of people live on the YouTube right now. We, we love you guys. we got a couple people live in the scope. Mm-hmm. That 11 turns to 15. That 15 turns to 20. That 20 turns to 30. That 30 turns into a million Wow. And we just broke the Periscope record. Someone just retweeted my uh, finished baseball video, so it's getting a lot of attention. (laughs) Someone responded to the morning show today on Twitter and said, motherfuckers really turn into this randomness. Mm. It's like, yep, every day. Every damn day. Jake's jesters. I I smell you. Yeah? You smelling them? They're turning into morning? Why don't we have Jakey Jester shirts? We need crop tops, dude. Do they offer them? I don't think so. Not on. Maybe the other company does. Yeah. Look into the it. The other company offers sun shirts. And like like penny jerseys. This would be silly. Those might be hard. Yeah. You still into pennies? I feel like we, I mean, we like might a little have aged bit. out a little. I, I mean, I don't really wear them to work. Don't wear them to the workplace. If you wore penny jersey with those glasses. Oh, yeah. That's. Uh, I'd, I wouldn't like me. No, yeah. Never have. <laughs> um, I wear the cold tank. That's our, our yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, BBD put this in banter that this kid built, built a Wrigley Wiffle Ball field in his backyard. Uh, happy for the kid, but I don't want to talk about it because I'll end up being mean because it's not impressive. Ooh, okay. Now I just want to see the picture. Here, I have it. So go and take her. He's got a lot of signage, which I think is cool. And his name is DJ Dick. Which is also, I think, <laughs> <laughs> that is the takeaway from this story. Yeah. yeah. Okay. DJ Dick. But like, look at it, dude. Like, that's not. He didn't build Wrigley Stadium in his backyard. He just put a Wrigley sign. The on outfield's the fence. pretty impressive. There's no outfield. Just put. Then where's that sign? Just like I, I, in a corner. The signage is cool, but like you know. Like where's that? That was in, I think, maybe right center. I don't know. It wasn't dead center. It's um, with what he's he had, they did pretty well. But uh, I'm, I've seen so many much better. It's a legitimate scoreboard. Yeah, there it is. The signs on the on like the right field line. Oh yeah, I mean, dude, that that shot is pretty impressive. I mean, that was full ivy. Full scoreboard. But it's just, we're just, the signage is cool. The actual gameplay isn't cool. That's tough. You're, I mean, maybe the toughest critic in the world on that. Yeah, I look at, and whenever someone says I built a wiffle ball field in my backyard, sure. I, I look. Right. I'm telling you, of all of them, this one's, it's fun. I'm not trying to poo-poo on DJ Dick. You're poo-pooing on DJ Dick I was let bit, down. You I, need to know that. It's like tree houses. I get so excited if you show me sure. a, there's a badass tree house, and then if it's not badass, it's like, I got my hopes up pretty big. So there. let me ask you this, because I know you know your Newtown house backyard field, mm-hmm. and I mean, do you think that your Newtown field is better than this field? Okay, wow, interesting. We had a forty foot right field wall. Right, I we mean it was the, a net. Yeah, but it's forty feet high. Yes. You're thinking of like Pinterest. I'm thinking of actually playing a game yes. on the field. Yes. I yes. don't care about the aesthetics. Right. I care about playing the game. I would not want to, that. It was basically batting practice only. Sure. My my field was badass. Right. I mean, you you had a big yard. This kid yeah. doesn't. So I said he did good with what he did. Right. It was basically just batting practice. Pretty yeah. harsh. Pretty harsh. It's got a good name, DJ Dix. How DJ do you name your Duke? How do you name your kid DJ when his last name's Dick? How do you <laughs> DJ Dick? Like, come on. I mean, he. You wonder if he leaned into that. Like, if they were David John, Derek Joseph. DJ Dick! What are some of our old... Because I know I'm remembering the one DJ that won us over. Yeah, uh... DJ Yup! DJ Yup! I like, kind of stole that. I kind of stole that with for like talking f- Nick. With, like, five U's. <laughs> DJ Yup. Who, well, who is that? <laughs> Cole? No. Uh, Jay, not, not Jay Cole. No... Um, Cause uh, the neighbors know my name. Not Wale. Screaming, shouting, my name, my name, my name. 
I forget. He got I big. Love you. Yeah, he got huge. I think he's saying neighbors know my name. Not Wale, right? Not Trey Songs. Trey Songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. His DJ name at our he came to our college and DJ was DJ Yup. <laughs> it's really good. Man. What's your DJ name, BBD? BBD? BBD. Okay. That works. Our friend Rob is like sneakily trying to get into music. And I think What do you mean by making music? Yeah, he's like living with guys who are making music, and I think he wants to be like their side dude. Just a hype man? And I think if you told me that there was like a DJ set and the pharmacist was coming out, I should have said Rob was a pharmacist. <laughs> yeah, Rob's a pharmacist. Well, was but a pharmacist. If you told me like the the pharmacist is like a perfect side guy name, like yeah. comes out in a lab coat. Yeah, no, I don't even need him in a lab coat. Okay. But just the pharmacist is great. It's good, right? Yeah. The pharmacist. There's some shady connotations because drugs. Oh, yeah. And I think that plays. Yeah, yeah, I think that's perfect. Yeah. And Rob was a pharmacist. He was a pharmacist. Yeah, that's great. And then he had a midlife crisis, and now he's going to USC to get an MBA, and he doesn't know why. And he almost interned with us, and we were like, Rob, what do you want to do with us? He's like, I don't know. Business is everything, right? (laughs) We're like, it's kind of a good counter, but. I guess. Oh, well. Ooh. Net, net. He listens to JJR, or at least he did before he he became a. A uh, pharmacist. Oh, yeah. He texted me last night, like late last night, and he said, oh, turkey math reference. <laughs> that'll, be on the, that'll be on the JJR, like, episode 250 quiz. Who knows what we mean when we say turkey math? Isn't that a common phrase? I don't think so. I think that's an us phrase. I thought turkey math was a thing. No. I think Ken made that up. And we've just rolled with it. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I didn't know that was something that isn't an actual phrase. If some if someone in the chat guesses what or knows the story behind Turkey Math, you get a you get a shirt today. Boom. I don't think I know the story Smart behind Turkey thing. Math. Well, we'll tell it at the end then. Ken just calls bad math Turkey Math, right? Something like that. Is there an actual story? Yeah. It'll be uh, halftime. It'll be halftime. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got to get to the sports. Mm, what what buttons the sports? I think it's X. I said, what buttons the sports? And speaking of those sports, Jim, the news that was late into the sports world and really took over, Cam Newton, Scam Newton, to the New England Patriots, it's kind of rumored about it for a while, and then it went away, and now it's real life, and it's a lot of fun to think about. Uh, the NFL <laughs> continues to roll on and just win during this whole clamdemic. Uh, MLB is starting to happen. The 60-man roster is leading to a lot of nerdy talks about the end of teams' rosters, which really puts lead in our pencils. Um, and a lot of like kind of mad guys. The Mets brought in. Just this crew of baseball names that'll, that'll Mel- shake you up. A Melky's bit. back. Uh, Larry Sanders eyeing an NBA comeback. I feel like this pops on here every couple weeks, and I kind of like it because it's silly and, and nobody really cares. LeBron decision. We're at the ten year mark. Life passes you by. A little documentary come out on that. Bill Simmons making waves after wave, slowly drifting. MLB players are starting to opt out. We saw Mike Leak, now Diamondbacks pitcher. He opt out with the Nats, Ryan Zimmerman, and Joe Ross. And Ian Desmond uh, came out with a powerful message last night that he will not be playing in this season. Uh, the Blue Jays still kind of have a <laughs> fun thing going on. <clears throat> oh! Where will they play? What will they say? They just may. Uh, they're looking at their spring training in Dunedin. We've been there. Um, also might end up in Buffalo, also might end up in Toronto, and Liverpool, they claim the English Premier League title, their first title in nearly 30 years. So many sports. 
So many sports. So many sports. Uh, he loved it. What do you want to talk about first? Cam Newton to the Pats? Scam Newton. I saw where they put a Scam Newton jersey on the Bear Brown maybe that's the Maybe that's the real news for JJR is that you're going to hear us say Scam Newton and start doing a Southern Ramble that we reference probably, I'd say, once every 20 episodes, more. Do you want to listen to it? It's the I mean, gr- I always do, and that's like kind of unfair. It's the greatest... <laughs> it's the greatest call in the history of um, sports radio. Okay, while you find it, I'll get actual sports takes in. Pretty cool because Belichick, there's always been rumors he's wanted a mobile quarterback because that's another way to, like, win at football, and that's all Belichick likes doing. Um, so we'll see. If healthy Cam is there, um, go Pats. When Bear Bryant died, I was living in Texas, and I really didn't understand the Alabama-Auburn rivalry. Uh, but a good friend of mine that lived in... Uh, Birmingham sent me a copy of the newspaper showing the uh, Auburn students rolling Tumor's Corner celebrating Bryant's death. Now stop, 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 <laughs> stop, stop. I, 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 even though I know what you just got through saying, and even though I know you're quoting from a newspaper, I, I just have the most difficult time ever believing that Auburn students rolled Tumor's Corner when the news broke that Coach Bryant died. Does anyone else remember that? I don't. Do you want me to send you a copy of the I still have a newspaper clipping. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of awkward here. because I'm not doubting your, your truthfulness. I'm just, are, are, are you guys in the other room in as much shock as I am? That, that, that is just one of the most shocking things I've ever heard. I, I, do, I do not want to believe that is true. Okay, let me finish my story. Okay. This year I was at the uh, Iron Bowl. There's no way that could be true. <laughs> well, okay. This year I was at the Iron Bowl. Okay. And I saw where they put a Scam Newton jersey on Bear Bryant's statue. Okay. I and mean, again, that's 28 years later. Okay. Well, let me tell you what I did. <laughs> the weekend after the Iron Bowl, I went to Auburn, Alabama, because I lived 30 miles away, sure. and I poisoned the two tumors trees. Okay, well, that's fair. I put Spike 80 DL in them. Did they die? Do what? D- did well, they die? They're not dead yeah, yet, but they, they will. They, will. They, they definitely will die. Is that against the, the law to poison a tree? Do you think, well, you think I care? <laughs> no. Okay, I really don't. Okay. Roll down tide. Mm. Okay, sorry. Back to the story. So, so, so Scam News. Yeah. Just the peak of sports fandom. Um do you think I care? And I think they saved the tumor tree. So they did. end of the yeah. day, it's a, it's a, it's a fun story. I saw where they put a Scam Newton jersey on the Baron Bryant statue. God, <laughs> you know what I did? So you, <laughs> so you know what I did? That's well, God. Spike. Say that. Say that an odd amount. Yeah, I quote. I quote that all the time. So you know what I did? Yeah, I put <laughs> Spike eighty. Yeah, that's so good. Uh, so it's fun. Um, like I think the Patriots are the favorite in the East now because the other teams are the teams that the Patriots have just beat for years, and now they have Cam Newton. And they still have Belichick. It's kind of cool. It's cool to see all of Belichick's old quotes where he's like praising Cam and like I think he's amazing and stuff like that. Yeah, and I um, you know what? It's and it's this kind of sick thing that it, I'll give BBD credit for this. He mentioned it in passing yesterday, but like. I think there might be this weird thing where you can almost root for the Pats and not feel weird about it. Like, Cam kind of comeback story, and it's like Belichick versus Brady right now. Like, everyone Pats that wants kind to say, of fun. Well, oh, Brady haters are huge Pats fans now. Yeah. See? System quarterback. Anyone can do it. That's, uh, I mean, talk about flipping the script. So, uh, and yeah, uh, the there was some stuff going around. Um, that was like racial stuff because Cam, I think he's getting seven and a half million max, and Jameis got like a minimum contract. Um, and there's some, you know, Chase Daniels getting paid, and some guys. I'll say this: Cam's most recent stats are pretty bad. Mm. Um, but the whole thing was his body was beat up, so I don't know. I, he looked I, huge in that workout video. He's um, from what I know. Our friend Shane, who was drafted in the NFL, he went to. Chiefs, uh, the N- the Chiefs. He went to the NF after the NFL draft. They have like a rookie symposium or something like that, and he said Cam was the biggest dude there. Like really? just in frame, like kind of the Aaron Judge thing, like just the way he's built, like with the linemen and everyone else that got drafted. Like Cam Newton was the biggest dude there. Um, 
So Cam, Cam's a monster. I uh, and yeah, it's this weird thing where <laughs> I think people are going to be rooting for the Patriots to shove. So that'll be interesting. And yeah, Keith, our Keith McPherson in the chat. Uh, Andy Dalton got like the same contract, and it's <laughs> I don't know if you're the Patriot. If they did a Patriots fan poll and said, "Hey, would you want Dalton <laughs> or Cam Newton for that contract?" Uh, I think it'd be 85-15. All those TCU fans. Shout yeah. out. So that's fun. NFL just rolls along, man. Yeah. God. Uh, dude, the the Bill Simmons and LeBron decision stuff is I'll let you roll on this. You've been, you've been running on this. It's crazy. He's been, he's been giving LeBron shit about the decision forever. He wrote that the reason LeBron did the decision, maybe it's because he didn't have a father in his life, which is just an incredibly fucked up thing to say, mm-hmm. and then print, and then editors read it, and then they all agree to it, you know. He had an hour special all about himself uh, where he he pawned it off as a charity, but it was just, you know, all about himself. And you wonder if it's not because he didn't have a father in his life. That was basically the article. Yeah. Like, I'm not I'm not doing hyperbole there. No, and that there's a... I, and I now mean, it, if, if you want to dive in, there's, you know, Simmons thread and some Simmons stuff out there that's got a lot of his old stuff and is like, but, yikes. Yeah, and that's a, that stuff's yikes. This is a different different than the sexist sure. and, and, and racist stuff. This... It's fucking so weird because it turns out Simmons pitched the idea for the decision. Yeah. It to, came from one of his old mailbag articles. Yeah, and then he wrote an email which got released to Skipper and all the ESPN guys about, you know, he wanted to have a documentary crew follow LeBron. And basically, if you want LeBron to come play for you, you, you got to allow these cameras. They're not going to yeah. wave him off. He said that. Like, it's so great because they have to allow it because they want to get LeBron. And he said he sat down with LeBron's crew, World Wide West and the other guy, and pitched it. Yeah. And LeBron took the idea and did it on his own and didn't do the documentary but did the TV special. And uh, and, and Simmons rips him of that. He doesn't have a father figure. It's his fucking idea. Yeah. So, like, it's wild. Now, clearly he's pissed that LeBron took him out of the plans and was like, you know, hey, right. that was my idea that I got from one of my mailbags and I'm not getting any, yeah. I'm not getting any money for it now. And now we're getting a documentary on the decision like Bill Simmons wanted and we're getting, and we got this one hour special, but weird and terrible look that he's ripping him and takes it like racist and personal all because he's just being petty and it was his idea that, and he, I don't, it's fucking, that blew me away. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, Man, the uh, the Simmons stuff is already starting not to age well, and it's um I don't know, especially with everything kind of going on in the world, and it's like, you know, the the way we've treated different people, and this <laughs> white dude from Boston that got like got away with a lot of stuff now, and it I don't know makes you uncomfortable, and it kind of should, but yeah, the uh, the decision stuff is is tough, and I don't know, I I almost said this as a throwaway line before because I um. Actually, I played a little video games last night with my buddy Jared from Fort Worth, and we were telling some old, old, old stories. And it's like, oh, well, that was that was six years ago, huh? And it's like, fuck, decision being ten years ago. We watched it together, it's I believe. Crazy man, it's crazy. Wow, mm. it's crazy. Wow, so good, but bad. Yeah, and then yeah, and then baseballs had a lot of guys opt uh, opt out. Mike Leake. Um, Ryan Zimmerman, Joe Ross, Ian Desmond, and I think so far it's going well. I haven't seen any assholes give them shit or anything, and, and you know, if you want to opt out, opt no out. No real people. I mean, there's always idiots on Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that, but no, like... Reply, yeah. guys, but not, like, yeah. people giving a take. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't care. Do you know, do you know Twitter's gonna, gonna... Twitter is about in, like, three... In a couple months, I think by six months, Twitter, everyone's going to be verified. So, like, if you you have to give them your ID and you have to have a picture of you, and if you are who you say you are, you'll be, like, a verified account, and anyone that's not just gets demoted. Like, their stuff just won't show up. It's going to mm. be fucking awesome. So, anyone with an anonymous account and all it just gets put, is that's what Twitter is planning on doing in, like, four months. How that work for, like... Like we have the different accounts for our podcast and stuff. I think I think you just have it. to prove that it's a company and a, a, sh- a what's radio. Behind what's it. behind it? But yeah, if if you're not a face, I've been begging for that. Yeah, I wanted to mute anyone that's not a human face, and you know, but that's going to be awesome. It's going to 
it's going to make Twitter a much better experience. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully yeah. Twitter doesn't cannibalize itself because I know. Yeah, they're not the greatest company. Yeah. But that's a good idea if they can actually pull that If off. they can execute it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, exciting. that's always the thing. But I, I, meant, I meant like people who's, who have audiences haven't been ripping on right. these guys. I don't care about the random reply. That's good. Did you read Ian Desmond's thing? Uh, yes. Yes. And I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of the, I mean, everything going on. Um, and, you know, he, he kind of doesn't feel comfortable with the world and he's reliving a lot of the stuff in his life. And I don't know. I mean, it's, it's his, it's his decision and it's, you know, it it shows everything. <laughs> like if if you're trying to step into someone else's shoes, you know, go check that out. And you know, his his he says that his high school teammates would would yell "white power." The president retweeted a video. <laughs> it started with that the other day. Um, yeah, man, it's crazy. And it's uh, uh. I don't know. It's uh, it's sad, and it's you know the the thing that's going around Twitter and baseball today is about all the Ivy League guys in baseball, and that I think the stat was in two thousand one MLB offices were like three percent Ivy League people, and now they're forty two percent Ivy League people, and it's um like obviously it ties in analytics and stuff, but it's also um I I don't know it ties into this effect of people hiring people they're comfortable with and you know kind of systemic type race stuff starts getting tied in i think there's one black gm um there's no black majority owners the front offices are so clearly white male and it just you know the the spiral of everything that's been going on in the world crazy but some players are opting out a lot of them make sense like um mike leaks on a contract year Collect the five million. Don't risk injury. Go to free agency. Um, be healthy I'm, and with your family. But also, if you want to dehuman, dehumanize the decision, business wise, it does add up. Like for some people that are, you know, Archer went and had surgery, tough, tough injury for him. But I'm just saying, like you know, if, if you're coming up on a free agent year, the Yankees got a bunch though, so I hope they don't do it. Yeah, I, I mean, you could spin that the other way though. I mean, you know, Mike Leak. Hey, go have two of the best months of your life and you can maybe go get more money. I don't know. Um, and I saw someone in the chat said, uh, you know, they said, what's the deal with the 60 man roster. And sometimes we forget how close to the pulse of some of this stuff we are, but each team basically gets 60 players that they can kind of keep around in their camp. Um, as, as part of extended spring training and then through the season and then players can kind of go from there as they please. So, uh, there's normally the 40 man. You can place guys on your roster from that. And even if you're not a Yankees fan, maybe go listen to us talk about the 40 man because we developed, we might have found a loophole. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I think we did. I'm very interested to see how that, there's got to be rules again. If that didn't come up in the mindsets, and this is all teaser, go listen to Talking Yanks, find teaser. out what it is. Wow, teased your butt off. Teased your butt. Uh, yeah, the, the, okay, I was going to ruin the loophole, but we'll tease it today. That's the half. Congrats, Liverpool. I didn't realize they've been 30 years. I guess they've won a bunch of other stuff because they have the different tournaments. Like, I think they've won Champions League. They just haven't won. That's cooler. EPL. Kind of. In a way. In a way. I think if you didn't like Liverpool, you could be like, oh, they haven't even won the EPL. Yeah. They won the other stuff. What's uh, the story behind Turkey Math? So, two people, the pharmacist Rob... Mm-hmm. And our our buddy Ken, who gets mentioned decently on this show, uh, high school, college friends, guys I lived with for a little bit. Um, one time, Rob, Rob, pharmacist, extremely book smart, not as street smart sometimes as a lot of people. Ken, in a way, as street smart as they come. In a way. In a way. <laughs> Um, He's a survivoralist. Survivor. Also can be an idiot. Him and Rob uh, became tied at the hip at one point, and uh, they were just having, like, a numbers argument, or they were talking about a situation. And (laughs) Rob's... Pharmacists are crazy. Like, they get to make 
they can only make like th- three mistakes in a calendar year. Or I think it might be two. I think three, you're done. Like you're suspended. And that's your job, your livelihood. Um, so his whole job is literally like counting pills. Mm-hmm. Um, Ken, human fool. Um, they were having some argument over something. And Ken was actually in the right. And Rob couldn't get it through his, his head. And so, <laughs> so Ken, <laughs> Ken can also be a little rude sometimes. He's basically in Rob's face, and he <laughs> the same math they've been doing. He goes, okay, Rob, let's pretend you have six turkeys. <laughs> now, if you lose two of the turkeys, you have four turkeys. <laughs> all, at the time, it almost made sense. Like, he was doing the jelly beans yeah, thing yeah. I did the other yeah. day, but he just did it with turkeys, and everyone was like, what the? hell was that why was it turkey yeah why it's a weird thing to go (laughs) so turkey math just became our general term for like if you start doing that game where explaining math dude ken has chickens and turkeys in his backyard could be that like his family has so that's probably why it's funny it's close to home he's got turkeys turkeys yeah so that's uh if you ever hear us say turkey math so jjr we got almost a hundred live in the youtube right now remember turkey math and that'll be on the 300th episode quiz. Yeah, I thought that was just a saying. I didn't know that was specific. Oh, no, that's uh, just us. Yeah, yeah. Because we say it a decent amount. Say it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Turkey math. It just means fugazi. To me, it always just meant like fugazi math. Like, right. Yeah. Are we still doing states? Are we done with states? I guess last one. It's June. Yeah, last, day last June. state. Okay. Well, it's Virginia. Okay. Because uh, rough start. They had slaves, right? Okay. Uh, oh. But they're good now. <laughs> All right. What? Wow. Oh, what just happened? It's a rough start, but we're good now. The audio cut out at the beginning. I'm going to get out I, of this. I, I, that is an important part of the mm. slow start thing. I read the news today, oh boy. <laughs> and though the news was rather sad, well, I just had to laugh. Well, it's 6 o'clock. Time for the news. The national anthem should be changed to John Lennon's Imagine, some annoying activists are saying. Decomposed leopard carcass was found in Agra school toilet. Jake? Hmm. Agra school toilet. Didn't you say that was going to happen? Yes. Stop microwaving books! Hmm. Michigan Library frustrated by all the damaged books. A poo jogger has been caught and forced to clean it up barehanded. That sucks. There's so many poo joggers. Like the, didn't, poo jogger. It's like a, a common theme. A group busted with a truckload of illegal fireworks and three dead alligators. Okay. Mm. Some seem worse than the other. Ohio Little Caesars delivers pizza with pepperoni swatsika in it. And a Louisiana man was busted for swimming in the Bass Pro Shop's aquarium. I read the news today. Oh, boy. Wow. What do you want to do? What's your, what's, your, what's your computer battery at? Oh, yeah. We were supposed to trade at halftime. 66. 66. Wow. Rate 66. Here uh, you go. You got, get some, you get, get some, get some uh, juice sauce you there. You climbed the ladder there. That was nice. I mean, the three, the two that are close to me are the microwave and the poo jogger. Um, Why, you've microwaved a book before? I microwaved my Game Boy as a youth, and it, um, it scarred me pretty good. Because my Game Boy was like my only toy, and then I basically killed it. You microwaved it to dry it? Yes, I, it was cold. It was cold. I left <laughs> it. I left it in the car overnight, and it was like cold Connecticut winter night. Was it not working in cold? Yes. Okay, okay. So, okay. It so it was so cold it didn't turn on. So I said, "How do you make things hot? Microwave." There's logic there, but I think I like if I had to get the year on it, I'm just young enough that you got to know a little better. Or, yeah. yeah. Nine's a little old. I just didn't I, I just didn't put the math together on that one. No electronics in the microwave. That's a good one for the kids. Did your mom, like, how did it end up? Like, it started sparking. Yeah. And I was like, ah. Like our microwave in college? Yeah. Oh, God. Our microwave in college would just randomly be a fire. <laughs> <laughs> not a joke. Not, not a joke. Nothing about that. It is was a like joke. one every seven times yeah. you used it. It was just like you put thirty seconds on it, just like it was, it was like 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 sparks. It was just enough. 
that it we, wasn't like you need to replace this. Yeah, yeah it happened. I, just it didn't happen often enough to replace it. I mean, Jake and I also lived with an yeah, ironing board as our kitchen times table. Were different. Like Jake danced through the kitchen table, so then we just used an ironing board. We just stand next to each other eating on an ironing board. I'd eat. I'd iron my shirt. Go to work. Yeah, that's all fun. I probably still would have replaced the microwave, but yeah, I think we ironing board things fine. A lot of people would. I think we switched it with uh, like the downstairs crew, and then they just switched it back. Yeah. Like, hey, did your microwave. You guys been using God. this? It would just spark like crazy. Like it looked like a demon in a box. It looked. If you were making a movie about a demon microwave, like, and you were casting, yeah, like no contest, yeah, no contest. So, <laughs> all right. So anyway, this uh, this uh, library in Grand Rapids, Michigan, is urging the public to stop microwaving its books as a method to prevent the spread of coronavirus. What? I thought they were just trying to dry them. They think it's coronavirus related? So people are getting books at a library, and when they bring them home, they're microwaving them to get rid of the Rona. That's dumber than you trying to make your Game Boy less cold. Thank you. I'd like a list of all the microwave books so you can see the demographic of who's doing mm. this. This one looks like a Window on the Bay by Debbie McComber. McComb? Um... Okay, I'll say this. If this is only one book, now I'm kind of mad. No, they can't make this announcement if it's more if it's only one book. Okay, it is it is multiple. The Kent District Library serving Grand Rapids, Michigan has so many damaged books from microwaving that it's taken its plea to social media. I don't know if it's something they saw in the news that they thought maybe the heat would kill COVID. Holy smokes. Dude, this is why, you know, the person who microwaved their book, the person who microwaved their book to get rid of COVID gets to vote. Yeah. Yep. It just doesn't add up sometimes. Window on the Bay has uh, 529 ratings on Amazon, and it's got four and a half stars. So shout out Debbie it's McComber. Good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Damn. You think you'd be interested in it? No. Let me do the plot for you. When a single mom becomes an empty nester, mm. she spreads her wings to rediscover herself and her passions in this heartwarming novel from number one New York Times bestseller. So we're old women. Old women are microwaving their books. God. Yeah. God. So stupid. Um, yeah, I mean, it just sucks. just sucks that that exists. Don't microwave your books. Final take. Japan has made book sanitizer. Yeah, I saw this over the weekend. And uh, to be fair, it looks kind of like a microwave. So maybe people saw videos like this one. Or like, oh, they're just putting Things it in, in Japan. Oh. No. If, uh, if we have any listeners so this- from the Grand Rapids area... Can you reach out to us? Because this article was on their website, and they've got the normal news, like, top things. It's like sports, weather, mm-hmm. live news. And then one of them is Jesse Jones. So I clicked on it, and he's a guy. So I just need to know, is, like, Jesse Jones, like, their star player? Is he a top prospect coming up through the news ranks? Because he has his own tab. Well, who is he? I, 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 don't know any- I think he's just a guy. I think he works at the news station, but apparently he's like their dude. Uh, is he an athlete? What are you? I don't even understand what you're saying. He works for the news station. Like I'm sure multiple reporters, news anchors do. Okay. I thought he was like a local athlete that had a tab. No. He works there. So it's a normal news top line. Like if you ever went to a news site, weather, sports, live, traffic. Yeah, but he gets his own tab. He's so, probably the face of that station. I mean, that's what I'm. That's what I'm asking the people of Grand Rapids. I've never seen that at another news thing. He's got seven thousand followers on Twitter. Got a consumer complaint or want to report government waste? Drop me a note. Mm. Watch today, Jesse Jones. Now Maybe on K I R O seven. He's an investigative reporter. I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Shout out. People are. Uh, this guy sent Jesse Jones a picture of his hair in his hand. Okay. Oh. 
didn't like that. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Not sure why I thought I would, but. No, it, it's okay. just a picture of hand and hair. Um, all right, so old ladies are microwaving books, and that makes us sad. Mm. The poo jogger. I'm sick of poo joggers. We get this all the time. I'm like, not. Let the record show. There's so many poo jogger stories. Yeah. Um, Forced to clean it up barehanded. There's a well, because he sh- Oh, look at that. I fucking love it. Give me the screen, BBD. They set a trap for the poo jogger. Mm. Like, they set a fucking trap. Holy... S- this video player sucks. Dude, that's a bad time. I mean, that is awful. Awful time. Make it... A, just make it full screen. You can... Oh. So, like, Jesus. I guess he's been shitting by the dumpster. Or, I don't know if this has happened a lot, but the store owner... Put the dumpster in the perfect spot so that when he opens the door, he gets trapped. Watch this shit. Bam. Now he's stuck. Yeah. Just straight trapped him while taking a shit. Amazing. How's this end? Dude, he just grabs his own poop. I haven't, I haven't seen the ending. I just saw the trap. Just straight just and then the guy says, up. like, not affected. Like, this is a normal day in the life for him. Well, what's he going to do? That's awesome by the shopkeeper. I wonder if this has, you know, been multiple times. Had to. This was a trap. A poo jogger has been caught in the act when he captured on CCTV out of the back of another man's shop, then forced to clean up his own mess. A video mounted on the wall outside the back of the shop shows a gray rubbish skip behind the shop and a small gap between a brick wall. Man. I'm that initial trap, though, just bam, gotcha. Got him. Awesome. The poo jogger is not phased during any of this. What are you going to do? If that's, if, that's, if that's me, like, if you're an honest person, you're just about to shit your pants. Right. And, it, and it's a solid log. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. You're just going to be like, dude, sorry, I was about to shit my pants. This was my only option. Thinking, I know like, it's fucked up. I apologize. I think that door comes into him while he's pooping and, like... I don't know. I think you're just feeling a lot of different emotions. Like I guarantee no one wants you, to poop. I outside. guarantee you, when that door goes slams, oh. the 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 extra push from the scaredness just. I, I bet you it think was that a, helps. Really, it helps. I could yeah. see that hurting. Bam! Um, All out. No, like we scared we scared Mac the other day. And he shit his pants. Scared the shit out of him. Yeah, puppy dog. Um, yeah, I don't know. I there is a my moment of terror. There is that the the poo jogger picked it up. And then he just walks away with he it. He didn't throw it in the it's, dumpster that was right there. Didn't put it in the dumpster. <clears throat> but, I mean, for a minute, he's in a position of power. I mean, if he twirls and fires, now you're throwing your own poop. Someone said, wasn't that a, a super quick poop? And you got to remember, this dude's running, jogging, yeah. hoping he can hold his shit in. And then it's the very last moment when he's like, I can't hold it anymore. So it's an instant. It comes out it instantly. sucks, yeah. man. You can't. This is, hate to give my PSA. If you have to poop, do it. Don't hurt yourself. But to be doing this regularly, that a guy, that's another human has to set up a trap to catch you pooping. Because what you said, I mean, think about it. You're saying like, okay, imagine you're on a run and you got to poop so bad, you're just going to do it. This guy plans this. This is a part of his routine that he got trapped. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm over poo joggers. I think it's like a weird I'm under poo joggers. It's a weird part of like runners and joggers that they think like it endears them to the jogging world. Like, yeah, you know, you had to shit while you run, right? Right. Just keep running. You know, the amount of miles I do, I'm bound to shit. It's like, no, dude. Allies. Yeah, they think it like unifies them having to shit while running because you, there's so many poo joggers. They pop up like every two weeks. You should have one to two career lifetime poo jogs. Yeah. Like, Max. Like, if, if it happens to you twice, you need to rethink about how you jog or how you're pooping. Mm-hmm. We live in a society. What are you eating before, you know? Yes. Iggy's. BBD, something on <clears throat> your mind? You got a big smile. Uh, my friend... <laughs> okay. Uh, pooped in a urinal in middle school. Uh, similar story. 
In a he urinal? had to go. He went to the one bathroom that only had one stall. It was being stall used. Was taken. Couldn't make it to the downstairs bathroom. He yeah. got a suspension because yeah. he got caught. Jake did that. No. But not the urinal. It was suggested to poo in the urinal, and, and Jake saw a trash can, so he pooed in the trash can after summer okay. baseball. Yeah. This, this, he almost got away with it, too, because the, they almost blamed it on the special needs kid. Mm. And uh, But he, he, took the, he took the blame. and Good. No one can grow up. Yeah, he turns out to be a good guy. I mean, the way you just depicted my pooing in a trash can story and not you and Connor taking any of the fall for that when I was screaming on the bus ride home about how bad I have to go to the bathroom. So we had the shit, too. Right, but I was like, compl- you, get, no, you guys took the bathroom to make a scene out of it for me. Well, we were shitting. And that's fine, but I clearly had priorital needs. Like, I was having trouble on the bus, and you guys were laughing at me and continued to laugh. We had to shit, too, though. And that's fine. I'm sure everyone could have taken some poop out of their bodies. I was going to shit. Yeah. You guys had to shit. Why didn't, you beat, us to, why didn't to, you beat us to the toilet then? Because I didn't think my friends would take the stall for me. But That's all, the key part of the story that you're leaving shit. out. No, no, it's no. It's not like I was Not sitting, as badly. It, not nearly as badly. I, what, someone was not, someone was not going to get a stall. I was, me and Connor were sitting there shitting. Yeah, and laughing. Because you knew what you did. No, no, no. Yeah, don't, because, don't excuse but, yourself but from it, this. It's, you were the problem. If you were shitting you and were Connor was shitting and I was stuck. You weren't going to go in the trash can. You would have waited kindly. I could not wait anymore. It was coming out. And you knew that and you took the bathroom. You say that like I'm the bad guy in the story. You are the bad guy in the story. I don't think you're confirmed. A, well, I didn't ever said it like you're a bad you're guy. You're saying you're over poo stories. And poo I, joggers. Poo, poo joggers. This is nothing like what happened to and you. And then you just, what well, you just clearly twisted. You're like, this is similar to his story. You just said, oh, yeah, Jake's done that. I was forced into doing that yeah. by bad people. Well, we had the shit too. By bad people. But it was funny because the trash can was a high trash can. So, the, so he had to stand onto the bench in the locker room and then shit down into it. Yeah. By bad people. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Breaking yeah. news. Well, breaking news, your Rockies, Jake, signed Matt Kemp. Good luck, Matt. Is that because Desmond's out? I don't know. I guess so. Sure. Uh, A group was busted with a truckload of illegal fireworks and three dead alligators. That's a... Well, well, that's a... a Thursday night. Yeah. I don't... How does... I hope they come into play. I don't like the dead gators. When you're breaking the law, breaking the it's law. more effective to go by what's going to make money rather than pick and choose what you're going to break the law doing. Police in Staten Island, New York, arrested a group of 10 Wednesday with a truckload of illegal fireworks they were planning on selling. Oh, so this is good. This is how they're getting. Yeah. Dude, last night the fireworks were, were the worst they've ever been by me. Yeah. They, uh, they've done a perfect job of now promoting the fireworks enough that more people are getting involved. So that's fun. Dude, look how many fireworks they found. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. So they, I feel like they've always been, I live by Riverside. They've always been setting them off by the park so we can hear the explosion. Mm-hmm. They must have moved it to the street because I was hearing like bone jarring explosion. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. It was the worst it's been. And I thought I was close to the explosion and they brought it closer to my bedroom. It sucked. How did the alligators come into play if this is in Staten Island? Staten Island, dude. You know what this is? A bunch of a bunch of people went down south somewhere to buy the illegal fireworks, right? Sure. And the dude who was selling them the illegal fireworks was like, "I got some critters too. I got some dead gators. You interested in gator too? Like and gator? and the the illegal firework crew." They were, like, so in it for the story. They were like, oh, yeah. You know, we're doing this already. Why not? Yeah, throw us the gators. A couple gators. One guy's like, why the fuck do we need gators, Bob? Gators. Bob's like, we can flip them. I know. We can sell some gator. Oh, that, that gator did. Alligator tail is pretty tasty, too. That gator did. Alligator tail is tasty. BBD, can you play? This came up at the car dealership. Can you play the Big Baby sound drop? Hey. What? So, 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 so part of the four hour business meeting <laughs> was what is that drop BBD <laughs> BBD, he totally missed the big baby in it well i was just looking it up and then i was practicing putting sounds in, yes and i haven't taken it out yet yes i i'm 
I think you know exactly what happened. I yes, but Jimmy he just hadn't gotten the big baby, and he's like, "What's that sound drop that's been dropping a couple <laughs> yeah, times?" And I was like, like, "What is his big baby?" <laughs> it's the whole thing. So I never heard that. I just always heard the, uh, you like. That's that. how I found it because I was trying that software. You're, so, you're dude, this is the question out. I was asking, Jimmy. Yes. Do you play that when you like something? I haven't figured out the math. It's kind of because so, I feel like there hasn't been a rhyme or reason. I'm like, when there? When is he dropping that? Is it because you like that, you big baby? Don't you? It's so just it's when an you emotion. like something. You it's drop an emotion. It? You don't know what it is, but it's an emotion. I think when I downloaded it into the computer, um, my idea was when Jake calls me out for smiling on something, I was going to play it. But oh, that, that would make that sense. Reaction yeah. that would make I have sense. a great like that, you big baby. That. Yeah. It hasn't happened yet. Okay, okay, that makes sense. I like it. That makes sense. I like it. I was just confused by it. I was, I was because it was kind of fair that you were there. confused because if you missed the big baby part of it. Yeah. But it's beautiful. But that was that was a part of our car dealership meeting. <laughs> uh, I don't care. Louisa, little about little, little Caesars delivers pizza with a pepperoni swatsika. Mm. Yeah, man. Almost like. I bet if you if you find who did Jeez. this, it's just some fucking sixteen year old dumb piece of shit that doesn't understand that's actually hurtful to a lot of people and thinks he's just making a joke. And you hope you hope it's that. Um, it also sucks if like what the people that ordered it like what was their name? You know what I mean? Like if it's a, a Jewish name, that's fucked up, right? Like crazy fuck. Then I change my entire stance. Yeah, they uh, in the article it says it was supposed to be a joke between the employees, which okay. Hot take: Hilarious. You can have jokes between employees without involving mm, the sans, customers. Sand swastikas. Yeah, do I that mean, with the pizza you guys are gonna split. And when I did, uh, when I worked at Domino's, we never did this. Never did this. Mm-mm. Not once. No, no. That just goes to show you that Little Caesar sucks. Ooh, shots fired. It does suck. It's not great. Anyone that knowingly orders Little Caesars kind of, ugh. You know who likes Little Caesars? Pizza Pizza. Big Evan. Does he? Evan and Co., yeah. Come on, Ev. Tastes like cardboard with cheese on it. Mm. Louisiana man busted for swimming in Bass Pro Shop Aquarium. Is this a prank? Or, like, why'd he go in there? I'm watching it now. It's a big dude, man. It's not. It's like a. He's a big dude. He looks looks kind of like a polar bear. <laughs> he looks like he's not really a swimmer either. Yeah, is, just, he, is he having a very bad time or a good str- time? Yeah, is he struggling? Oh, okay. That looked like kind of like a prank. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. That's, I'm not into it. It definitely looked like he lost a bet and it was like you have to jump in the aquarium and then jump out. I, yeah, that looked like I have a video of my little brother Luke. Um, when we were at a we were at a hotel and there was like a fountain and we like dared him to jump in the fountain. Sure. And then as soon as he jumps in the fountain, we go, "Oh shit, Luke! No, no, get out, get out, get out!" No one was around at right. all, and he panics and gets out and runs away. And right. that's kind of what that looked like to me. Yeah. Um, I think uh, we got a quote from another customer that said, "This is interesting." The customer's name was Treasure McGraw. That's it. What are you talking? What are you referencing? We got a quote in this article. Oh, oh, uh, we the got story a story we're talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, we threw me off. We got a quote. We got a quote. It has there. a quote in there from another. We've got a quote in there. This is interesting. That's a whole quote from Treasure McGraw. The reporter wrote that in there. The reporter Treasure McGraw. Check out Instagram. What is that? So, Jackie Sal- Sallows, the writer of this article. <clears throat> what the fuck, Jackie? Uh, let me read this whole article. It's five paragraphs. In That's page. what I'm telling you, man. That's why this is important. So, the art- we all watched the video. It's the guy who jumps into the aquarium at, at a Bass Pro Shop. Get trout of here. Yeah. <laughs> So we're we're opening yeah. we're opening off. You know, she's you're going she, take you're taking that route. She's setting the tone right away. A Louis or Jackie, I'm guessing a female. A Louisiana man was busted after going for a swim through a gigantic fish tank in an outdoor recreation store. 
Authority said. Authority said. Kevin Wise, 26, was charged with simple criminal damage to property for his superstitious dip Thursday at a Bass Pro Shops in Bossier City. Bossier? Bossier City. How do you say that? Bossier? I'm not sure. Bossier? I think it's Boss. I don't know. Video showed a fully clothed Wise swimming with the fish in the indoor aquarium, climbing out and making a soggy run for it out of the store. So that paragraph is just literally a recap of what happened. Sure. This is interesting, said another customer, Treasure McGraw, who filmed the bizarre incident and posted to social media. Dude, I don't. This is what pisses me off about like the New York Post. Mm. If you just want to share viral videos, right? Just share viral, viral videos. videos. Are you really paying Jackie Sallow to write this one? Maybe she's getting paid to write other articles that are worthwhile. But like this article is nothing. It's just for SEO reasons, really. And yeah. I get, I get the game. But that, like that quote, she puts it as a quote. It's yeah. the guy who films it. Yeah, it says it as he's filming it. This is interesting. Treasure McGraw. And I'm guessing maybe that's his social media hand, social media handle, and not his real name. Get Trout of here. Journalism's a weird industry right now. Weird industry. I dropped oh all my the God. dropped all the baggage episodes. Baggage. Crazy. Anyway, that's the end of that. Day, it's the bed of the day. Bed of the day. Bed of the day. Bet of the day, bet of the day. It is the bet of the day. Jakey, Jakey's been soccer crazy. Mm. He, in the month of June, is five and seven. Free money. One, two, three, four, five correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven wrong. Five and seven you are, Jake. Hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a little skewed. If you remember, Poppy left a little cheese on the penalty kick play. Yeah, that cheese don't count last week. Um, and for the real ones, that cheese counts, and that that got you some money. So you're welcome for that. Um, yeah, and I mean it's it's a soccer life. It's a soccer month. Um, and we're missing my week where I went undefeated. So it, it's whatever. I'm. I'm, I'm not going to dwell on that because it's time for winners because that's, well, that's what it's all about. And I think where we're going to go, James, is I think we're going to... Do you know I have the same exact record as you, but we're, it's not all agreeing different, and disagreeing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also five and it's seven. It's pretty fun. Um, you know what I think I'm going to go to today, Jim? I think we got a fun soccer match coming. Okay. Everton versus Leicester City. Leicester. Um, you know this is this is a fun matchup. Uh, I'm tempted to just put a little chess on the draw. Tempted to put a little chess on the draw. I'm gonna go with the over. Oh, what is it? It's at two and a half. Um, and I don't, I think these teams are are fairly even match. I think we get one early that kind of opens up this game, and I I think we're looking at a a two one three one type final. Leicester versus uh, Everton? Leicester versus Everton in Everton. Leicester's pretty good. Everton, not as good. Say the, say the over-under again. Sorry. Two and a half. Two and a half. Freaking the low. Freaking Everton, the low. Everton has only scored one goal in their last three matches. Mm-hmm. Everton hasn't scored a lot at all. They suck, huh? Dude, Leicester hasn't scored. Leicester's only scored one goal in their last three matches as well. Do you believe in do? No, not okay. now. That's fair. Not now. And and because we have the same record, I want it to change somehow. So I also want to disagree with you a little bit. Sure. So, sorry about it. Jakey, fine. Jakey, about to make a big mistakey. I disagree. I think the under is the play here. I respect your decision. Two goals in the last three matches for both teams, and the over-under is two and a half. 
I think they want you to hit that under. Oh yeah, that's what they're baiting you into. Oh yeah, but I'm I'm taking the bait and running away from the line. Oh yeah, yeah, surviving. I had a piece so bad. I've had to piece so bad since halftime. Let's go do it then. Let's go do it. Let's uh, let's all go to the lobby. All right. Having too much fun, doing nothing at all. That's an old song we got to bring back. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you. Have, we'll a, be- have a good Tuesday. Best Tuesday you can. Yeah. Try your hardest. Do your best. Uh, if you don't succeed, at least, you know, just fucking have a good day. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.